Hey there, welcome back to the final part of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. I hope you found inspiration in our guest journey this week. Today, we'll leave you with some key takeaways and actionable insights that you can lean on. Now let's wrap up with some powerful lessons that can help guide you on your own path. Don't forget to tune in for a brand new guest next week on Monday. But for now, enjoy this week's. Please subscribe to the channel if you don't already as well. Have a great weekend. We'll see you soon. So NLP is more like scrambling your brain. Scrambling your brain to confuse your brain so it can't do that same thought process. The problem with that is that it's not a long-term solution. Uh, solution. Yeah. It works like it works well in some cases. Brilliant, right? But it's good for for its for its thing. Um, then we then timeline therapy is probably one of the most powerful tools that I learned in helping uh, letting go of your past negative emotions. So things that you've held on to from the past that control your future, that if we uh, use this tool called timeline therapy, it would help people let go of of those things, of those bags that, that are holding us back. Mm. But it was too quick and too short. Um, it was effective, but from my experience, it could have been done better. Yeah. And then hypnotherapy right so just normal hypnotherapy is like you know quitting smoking you know someone's reading from a like a piece of paper and they're just reading something to you you know while you are in your subconscious mm. so they're reading a script it's great again it's great but there's um, a lot of the times people would say you know i can't be hypnotized or it didn't work for me um, you know, it didn't last all those types of things. Yeah. So I had to work with a lot of these pros and cons, right. To take out all the bugs. And then there was the Demartini method, which is a whole different program again, um, which was, um, all about nothing's ever missing in your life. That whatever you're perceiving as a drawback, um, there was a benefit. Mm. That was his philosophy, right? Obviously, there's more to it, yeah. but it, but it's around that. Um, so I had to really understand how could I integrate everything into that, into those modalities. That's amazing. Mm. Has anyone ever done anything like that before? Um, I look. I think, look, as in like the De Martini method. He's got his own method. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Right. Um, uh, timeline therapy was created by Dr. Tad James. So he, so he created that. Yeah. Okay. See what you mean. And then I've just gone, you know, I'm just going to modify it. Well, that's, that's what we have to do, right? That's what we have to do. We have to take pieces of everybody. I mean, that, yeah. that's what I did in my teaching uh, and that's yeah. what I did in with this, for example, yeah. you know, yeah. even just the podcast, I'm taking pieces yeah. of everybody, put my own mm -hmm. little spin on it. Um, I don't accept anything yeah. less that it's going to work. <laughs> yeah. Plus, because I wasn't using timeline therapy for what for what it was, mm. I couldn't legally call it call it that anyway. Because it was somebody else's. Because it was. It's yeah. It's like you have to use it with this intention. Yeah. You know, like this. Um. Otherwise, you can't call it that because it's like, what are you doing? You know, you're 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 not you're not you're not following instructions. Yeah. Um, so I, when I, when I pulled it apart and I put it back together again, it was no longer timeline therapy. Right. Um, yeah. So I've got a couple more pictures here, Karim. And, um, I, I, I just, well, I, I, I did this one because I wanted to show people, I'm going to move my notes out of my way, but I want, I, I brought, I did this one because I wanted to show people like, you know, the seriousness of, of these adverts of what you're doing, the type of things that you're doing, by the way, I'm going to put all the show notes, the links in the show notes, by the way. So anyone yeah. who wants to watch these, um, cause I have clicked on them before and, um, I want people to be able to refer to your information. Like 
<laughs> coming to Sydney. I, like, I just love to say Andy White leading our own way coming to Sydney. It's never going to happen. <laughs> uh, no, it is going to happen. What am I talking about? Um, and I, here's talk to us a little bit about, I mean, I know that I see these type of pictures everywhere. So I picked a few. Um, <laughs> talk to us about what you typically would do at an event like this. Yeah. So I run, um, I help run and lead uh, Australia's uh, biggest business networking event. Nice. In Melbourne. Um, so yeah, we get uh, a whole bunch of um, business owners and we, and we network and I help lead um, the event. Nice. Yeah. Well, if anyone else is listening to this and needs that type of uh, event, I've got him on my show. <laughs> I had him first. Uh, welcome to make contact with him. I'll put all his details in the show notes. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's this one? You're not wearing the jacket, by the way. I'm disappointed. I know. Hey, I know. Hey, I think I was, um, I was speaking at a, um, I was at a small talk. I think I can't remember what that was exactly, but I remember having uh, the opportunity to speak for like 10 minutes about what I did. Um, that was earlier on in the day where I was trying to build up a brand and, you know, trying to find my feet and where I live, where I, where I belong in the world. Yeah. That's cool. Mm. And just, and before we, cause I want to talk to you about your future before we end the show. Um, mm -hmm. But before we do, I've got a picture here of you at another event. Uh, so we won't need to go into that one cause it's pretty much going to be the same as the others, I guess. Um, yeah. But you've got a picture of you and your lovely family and your yes. children. I asked for permission before I put that on there, guys. Just so you know. <laughs> um, I wasn't just displaying. And uh, one of you of and your lovely wife. Yeah, yeah. And if, yeah. I remember from our conversation a few weeks ago. Yes. And if we can't share it, you can say not to. Um, I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was brilliant. Are you happy yeah. to share how you met yeah, your wife? Yeah, I'm, I'm an open book. Go for it. Tell, tell us how you met your wife then. So I was out um, one night. It was actually a, it was a Bucks night and we're at a bar. <laughs> and um, it was a Spanish night. Ladder night. Um, and my wife was there, um, waiting for her date, her, her date. I love it. And, uh, it was a blind date and he didn't turn up. Bust. So, <laughs> so I went in and I'm like, Hey, how are you going? Well, I started talking and she tell, she, she was telling me, Oh, I'm, I'm meant to meet my date tonight, but he didn't turn up. And I'm like, perfect. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> right uh, yeah. yeah and i'm like cool um you know and so and so we got talking and i think back then i was like um i was sick of the whole playing the game type of thing mm. like i was just ready to like it was either going to settle down or i just wasn't so you just being so, yourself right just being myself and i and i think everything leading up to this, to this moment, like everything that I've been through, <laughs> yeah. I just, I just, I, 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 I could be myself. Um, so I just said, Hey, look, you know, I'm not the type to play games. Um, I'm going to call you tomorrow. And, and she probably thought like I was, I was talking shit. I probably thought, you know, that is the game. <laughs> Yeah, that I've heard this before and, you know, all that kind of thing. But I was like, no, nah, I'm actually going to call you because I think you're cute and, you know, I really enjoyed our time together, blah, blah, blah. And I did. And I called her and I think she was surprised that I actually called her because um, she went from not, you know, having someone not turn up to having someone, you know, lead and, yeah, call her the next day. Wow. So she, she got insecure, I'm guessing she got insecure because of that date not turning up for those moments until you did call anyway, at least. Yeah, for sure. So, um, she was there, <laughs> she was there with her sister and her other friends. Mm. So I had to call the cavalry for some, uh, for some backup because I'm having to speak to her and I had to get one of my friends to, um, to help me out, right. And to keep her other friends busy. <laughs> While I was talking to her, so <laughs> lucky I didn't have a shortage because it was a Bucks night, you know, where I where I had some of the boys there, and I'd be like, "Hey, you know, like, help me out here." Um, yeah, and here we are. We've got two kids. 
and what a what a, a great way um to you know show how everybody how you've led your own way i think it's absolutely amazing it's stunning look at you and actually you know when you met her that night what was your appearance yeah. like then was it before the transitional changes so this is this is funny right it's hilarious so have you seen um is it is it dr doolittle yeah of course dr doolittle where like he drinks the potion and he's skinny right yeah so after that during that night i was or during that time i had my first surgery so I was at like my skinny stage. Mm. So I was confident. I mean, I was feeling the room, you know, I was looking like you're looking now. I was, I was vibing probably. Uh, um, yeah. Probably like this or probably even like a little bit skinnier. Mm -hmm. But then when I, when I started dating her for, a, for a period, um, it's sort of like in the movie of Dr. Doolittle, like when, when the, when the potion runs out, his fingers start to get fat, right? So he knew that he was getting fat. Um, is that the right movie? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think so. so it was like, oh my gosh, this first surgery isn't working. I'm getting fat again. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So I quickly sealed the deal with her. Right. Uh, we were, we were like, we were dating for a while, but I didn't want to get too fat for like, for her to like change her mind. So I quickly got married to her and yeah. And we, and we sealed the deal and all that kind of thing. Um, it was funny because when I proposed, I was really skinny, but then on, on my marriage day, right. I was, I was a little bit bigger. Like it's, it's hilarious seeing, seeing the timeline. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And obviously she's like, you know, she's a, she, she's a very attractive person. Mm. So I always felt like, you know, she's too good for me type of thing. You know, like, she, she, like she's hot. You know what I mean? So your insecurities have come back in again. Yeah. So when I put the weight back on, I'm like, oh my gosh, mm. like she's smoking hot. She's beautiful. You know, how am I, how, how can I ever deserve this type of thing? You know? Um, so I went back into my old ways of depression and anxiety and, you know, feel not, not feeling good enough. And then that, and it was that, it was that kind of cycle again. Did you, did it ever cause any problems between you two? You know, maybe jealousy or paranoia? Um, I think for me, uh, not like, not for her. No, she saw me. me like, yeah, she saw me like, she goes, I couldn't even, she says this, but she says that I couldn't even see the weight. Well, she just saw me. Well, that's because she's in right? love with you. Yeah. Right. But I saw me. Yeah. So whenever people would be like, you know, oh, you know, Alex, you're beautiful, you're gorgeous. And then they'll turn to me and just say, hey, how are you going? <laughs> I'm like, hey, I'm here. You know what I mean? They never but, turn to the guy you know, and say, I know, yeah, but you're hot I know. as well, mate, right? you know? <laughs> no, but like, it, it, it shouldn't mean anything, but I took it personally. Yeah, I know, I get it. Because I had this chip in my shoulder. It's in your head again, isn't it? It's in my head, but in reality, it, like it didn't mean anything. Mm. Like that, you know, they were just being polite to my wife. Of course, yeah, right. Mm. Um, but it played a lot of mind games with me. It's like, you know, shit. You know, like I feel, I feel shit again. So there was a lot of insecurities um, around that. Yeah, evidently we're in the good cycle right now, um, <laughs> and I've said that on purpose because I'm hoping there's not going to be another cycle of going down. Uh, that leads nicely into my next question, I suppose, and how I normally mm -hmm. come to the end of an episode. Mm -hmm. um, what does the future lie for Karim? Uh, the future looks so exciting, yet so scary at the same time, just at the rate that I'm growing. Love it. And where I'm going. Yeah. Um, because, and I don't think, look, we're all got, we're, there's always going to be hard times and tough times, but this cycle, I think it's, it's, it's behind me. I've been able to understand this cycle and this, like, if you were to know me say five years ago and speak to me today, completely different person. Yeah. Completely. Um, so when I'm having a look at the future, I, because I know that the future relies on me and I'm in control of my own future. So I can, create whatever it is that I want in my future. Mm. And because I love creating 
a lot of things and exciting things. Uh, and because it's up to me, yeah, that this is why it just it looks so exciting yet so scary because, yeah, it's my destiny and I am leading my own way. Love that. You're the first guest who's put the title into their own answer. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, well, your present self is your future self, isn't it? Because you, yeah. you know what I mean? Like if you're, if you're down now, well, then that's still your future self until you make that spark, which you've had many times in your life to make mm. that, to make that change. Mm-hmm. Mate, that's beautiful, man. I love it. Absolutely love it. And I I love hearing your stories. I love seeing online that you're doing all these different events. Uh, and um, I know we're going to be back next week uh, to do a little thing and we'll, we'll have a quick discussion after this, after this chat about that. Uh, yeah, for sure. I have to cover some areas that I might be a bit nervous about. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, that's exciting. So, okay, um, how I normally end the uh, – well, two ways I normally end the uh, podcast. First of all – actually, there's three. First, if, is, if there's anything that we'd missed in our conversation that you felt was super important, mm-hmm. is is there anything that we've missed that you think is super important that the viewer should know about you? And your um, it might might be a nothing, by the way. I just want to put it out there. I mean, for me, one of the other big moments for me um, was being in the paper. So, yeah, I was in the Australian Business Journal. Oh, love it. So that for me was like, you know, that's huge because I was, I was the kid that that was dumb and fat and stupid. So, having myself in the paper and being seen as a as an expert, um, yeah, it was is. Is a big thing for me. Absolutely. And is there a part of you that hope your your peers who may have said something when you were younger or as an adult, young, young adult, or even your teachers maybe, or even certain to a point to your parents, not in a negative way, just because, you know, you want them to be proud of you type thing. Mm. Um, is there a part of you that they, you hope, I know your parents probably saw that, but they, that the other people would have seen that too? For sure. So um, a lot of my peers from uh, primary school and high school, they were like, oh my gosh, you know, like we're so proud of you and how far you've come and where you've gone. Um, it's it's very, like it's very humbling, you know, like to see that um, I've been able to inspire them. Yeah. When in times when they were the, you know, the smarter kid, they were the, you know, higher, higher achievers that they inspired me once upon a time mm. that I am now able to, you know, give back to them and, and inspire them. And even, and even the teachers. Yeah, absolutely. Did you, so you, you, so you must have taken pieces of everybody growing up um, from your childhood, your teenage years, your younger years to, to put into who you are today, right? Every, every, everything that I've done consciously and subconsciously has brought to me to, to the exact same spot that I, to the exact spot that, that where I am today. Yeah. I suppose, mm. I suppose that goes for everybody, doesn't it? Whether yes. it's worked for them or not worked for them, the, there are yes. products of every decision they've made. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Second to last. Mm-hmm. If you were going to give your younger self or somebody that's been through some similar things. If you could give them a one line piece of advice, what would it be? What I would do is I would tell my younger self that you need to go through this, that once you go through this, think of it as the, the, the school of life that life is preparing you here and as uncomfortable as it is, it's preparing you to be so much more resilient because you're going to need it in the future. Yeah. Great piece of advice. Last thing I promise. Mm -hmm. You've already kind of said it. I just, again, I want one liner and and I I think I've said this to you before, but as I put this into my man, man scenario, being a man scenario, being a dad scenario and being a Mm -hmm. leader scenario, yeah, and I, I kind of got this, I saw this line on a teacher Facebook group once from somebody and I transferred it into mine, kind of what you did, but I've moved it mm-hmm. into my own little scenario. And um, I took the advice from Simon Sinek to think of your purpose as a one-liner. Mm-hmm. And um, 
my three lines for those three categories to be the man I always needed and wanted, to be the dad I always needed and wanted, and to be um, the per- um, to be the leader I always needed and wanted. Um, and the leader, oh. that, the leader thing that comes for me is the reason why I wrote the book because I, you know I went through a workplace trauma scenario mm-hmm. where I was bullied to the a very dark level. Um, and you know, if there's anyone that's watching this as well from that time in my life, um, they didn't see it, right? They didn't see it. They didn't feel it. They didn't believe it. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, I had a very close friend who didn't believe it. And she realized one day how deep it was when she saw the, saw something happen. And, you know, and that really, really hurt me as well, you know? So mm-hmm. I don't know why I shared that with you there, to be fair. It was a bit random, but it felt Good right. Um, but that's the reason why I wrote the book. And that's why I came up with the, the leadership purpose line. Um, oh, I like that. Yeah, to be the leader I always needed and wanted because I never really had that in the workplace. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. What I did, and he did, he didn't know it, um, and he saw the pain, but he, he mm-hmm. you know, he he was pretty much couldn't do much, which I understood and understand still to this mm-hmm. day. But yeah, um, Grim, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate, for joining me on leading our own way. I think a lot of people will be able to take um a wealth of knowledge and i don't even mean using you as a as a business asset needing you in their line mm-hmm. of business just uh, from your personal strategies uh, the the mindset that you've taken yeah um, you know you some you're going through the cycles and having that spark um that change of thought that that motivation that inspiration and and, and not letting yourself be fall into that category of what everyone believed you were or you thought mm-hmm. they thought you were if that makes sense mm-hmm. um, yeah. you always pushed on and um you didn't let that um identification that people were putting on your head stick with you yes uh and, yeah and and that's that's awesome man and i i know the viewers will take that with them and put it into their own life no matter what age they're at because it doesn't matter how old you are um no. we all go through things at different things you know people get angry at 50 yeah. people get depressed at 50 and they've got mm-hmm. that wealth of experience behind them but it doesn't mean it's going to benefit them in any sort of way so um i know that you they will be able to take a lot from this chat and i i appreciate your time man i really do and i look forward to uh, being hypnotized next week <laughs> so come back to part two people <laughs> can't wait i'm nervous uh you should be oh, no, i'm that. kidding i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> um oh so i didn't actually didn't actually your purpose did i my one liner what, no. what's your long what what's your one liner Sorry, I just rambled on and let, didn't ask get your question. Uh, my one line of purpose is to help people um, break through their glass ceiling so they can be the, the best person that they can be. Love it. And you're gonna yeah. you're gonna let me you're gonna make me crack that little bit that's still sticking there in my mind, aren't you? <laughs> For sure. For sure, man. Brilliant. Thank you so much. I really appreciate mm-hmm. you being here and um, we will get you on next week. Cheers, mate. Speak to you soon. Definitely. Take care to everybody else that's watching the show. Join in, tune in to us too next week for part two and um, it'll be a lot of fun. Have a good week, everyone. Thanks for listening and watching Leading Our Own Way. So we can stay together forever and share more incredible journeys, please subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss next week's episode and what that amazing guest has to offer to the world. Please support Leading Our Own Way and we'll get you on next week's episode.